Hello? Are you out of shape? Do you struggle to perform basic tasks? Do you overeat? It's time for digital fitness. Gerald Williams is well below average, and if we aim for bodybuilder levels of fitness, we can make him into a powerful human machine. Observe his weak knees. Having skipped leg day for years, he is a waste of a man. But I'm going to prove that over the next 30 days, we can get some fitness experience. We'll see how far Gerald can get in 30 days. He's at around 8 at level 4 fitness, and around 1100 at strength level 4. I'd like to max him out on these two trees, because they're pretty important, so let the fitness montage begin. The first day yields delayed onset muscle soreness, fatigue, and a balanced diet consisting entirely of cabbage. The pain is severe. So much pain that it's yielding boredom and depression, but it's making for gains. Still no appreciable gains, but cross-training yields results. The pain has become too brutal to complete any more fitness for today. Apparently, I also can't sleep from the pain, so I need to just wait it out. When the pain becomes too unbearable, we go for a run, and we're actually breaking some new ground. The goal is to be constantly in motion or actively resting. Not a moment can be wasted. And whenever I'm not exercising, I'm planting. The food I eat will help me make greater gains. Cabbages contain protein, and the rain is muscle milk for my soul. And when the pain, exhaustion, and depression have subsided, it'll be time for bed. Work builds character. Character builds huge quads. My cabbages have rotten, but my depression is already maximized. All I see are gains on the horizon. The rotten cabbages yield sickness. I need to rest and sleep. It's time for the first round of Soma. I can't quit my grind. In the words of Ronnie Coleman, everybody wants to be a bodybuilder, but nobody wants to lift this heavy ass weight. Truly, the road to gains is extremely dangerous. Several days of extreme torment are beginning to pay off. Though with each workout, my body feels progressively less delayed onset muscle soreness. After some time, we begin to encounter the actual real world problem that there are diminishing returns turns to gains. And after only about two weeks, the grim reality is beginning to stare us in the face. The fact that we will never be good enough, that we will never be cool enough to hang. Sure, we've made gains, but what is it all when we don't have iron to pump? One can only rest and eat so many rotten cabbages before succumbing to dementia-like symptoms. The rest of our time is spent running in circles around the yard. But habit builds excellence. And having passed the initial beginner gains, Gerald is on to the blessed time, the workouts of the weekend warrior, and he flourishes. Initially, I was under the impression that having a low regularity meter would give you more gains for beginner gains, but now that I look at it, it says it perform- it says that it improves fitness when performed regularly. I'm not- I'm still making gains, so I'm just gonna keep doing it. Although, I need to switch to worms as a food source. Each day we have enough time to sleep twice and complete two sets of each of the exercises. Based on what I'm seeing, it seems like squats and sit-ups give you fitness, push-ups give you strength, and burpees give you bulk. Knowing this gives me more control over the process of making gains. And it makes sense that if we gain fitness before strength, we should probably make make gains faster. The reason being that we exercise until we're out of breath, which is governed by fitness. Now nearly half a month spent doing burpees next to my bed. It's all going to be worth it in the end. Each day I feel I have to improve. And after nearly, nearly three weeks have gone by, and after all this time, Gerald is finally about to reach fitness level 5. It takes him only about 20 days of training. While this doesn't really show anything different, it does mean that he runs out of breath more slowly. We'll next get to strength level 5 and have his uh, max inventory size increased. A few more days of rest and exercise. Fitness leads to strength, so in my last set of push-ups I should raise that capacity. He's looking stronger when he does the push-ups now. I've done most of them in fast motion, but he seems to be more solid now. And now he's at 12. And that's even while winded and queasy. He's He's improved by one kilogram of carrying capacity. Not bad, not bad. I mean, this also enhances his combat abilities. It does a lot for him, but it definitely does take a long time. I'd been planning on doing 30 days, but it didn't even take me that long to reach these next levels. I think if we go for any higher levels, I'll just see if I can get these dumbbells and barbells instead. That might accelerate my fitness journey enough so that it wouldn't be so long. In the meantime, we've also managed our weight and we're back above 80 kilograms. I'd say we're well enough equipped now to grab a car and run 
run into a town to see if we can find more of this fitness and equipment. The one last thing we can do is just get that last sprinting level 5, so we're average in all of these stats. And now that we have better fitness, it'll be easier to get sprinting faster. This way we don't get out of breath so fast. Yeah, he's definitely making progress faster now. Only three more experience, one more, and that's it. It's time to rest. Getting dark out and we need to test our abilities again. So that's it. Three stats raised by one. Well, it's been under a month and we've managed to improve everything about Gerald. I'd say he's now ready for another journey into town. He's looking like a fairly good character now. He's got a lot of improvements. Clearly still a few areas to work on, but in general, he's much more fit and nimble. Now we can run with these gains, quite literally. I have now ascended. I dare say Gerald Williams is now ready to ascend. He is halfway there in most things. So while I'm still strong, let's head back to town. I now have even more business in Muldraw, and I learned to run in fast motion. You just hold down shift. Could be a bit risky, but I think we're safe out in the wilderness, as long as there's no zombies around. And really slowly, this might help him improve at sprinting. Besides, right now he can run for miles and save time. Though unfortunately, it doesn't really seem to be doing anything for his stats. Before long, we're right back where we started. And now we can use greater stealth. We should aim to avoid altercations. And under the cover of fog, we have a great way to get back into town. But although I'm stealthy, they aren't. Well, as far as I can see, we don't have much choice left. We need that car battery charger back if we want to get back into town. But it seems like just about every square inch here is occupied by Zeds. At least I'm good at sneaking. And it looks like we've still got a remainder from before. That's why I'm so elusive. It pays in such situations to have endurance and know when not to panic. They're all moving to the south. I can't really tell why, but I'm okay with that. And we've avoided detection. Recovering our old items, we should be able to get back, but now without some company. I lost my duffel bag too, come to think of it. There we go. It'll be heavy, but we can make it. And in fact, I have one last stop here. I'd made a mistake when I first visited Muldraw. I thought that the only gas station in town was in the middle, but it turns out there's one more to the south right here. And although it's not great, it is a gas station. There's also a few interesting haunts down here in Muldraw. You just have to know where to look. You bet Abandoned warehouse. This is my main target. Not a big fan of the color, but it'll get me around these farmlands. I still don't think I can get back into Muldraw. Maybe it'll be something I need out here though. After all, there is a lot of land, but it's unclear how far we'll be able to take this car. I think we'll park it here. I'll travel the rest of the wilderness on foot. Where I'm going, you need only stealth, and the cover of evening and night should grant us that. Well, it turns out that this neighborhood was an unlikely treasure for me. Our pack is now filled to the brim with canned goods, and we can proceed on to the real prize. Over on the north side of town, there should be a couple of warehouses that'll encase more home development items. Truly, these are the real prize here. In the first one, we tread with caution. Many crates hopefully will contain something of use. No, no, yes, no, no, yes, yes. Yes. No, no, no. Well, that's a real surprise. There's almost nothing in this one. A wrench is okay. But this is a bust. The other one? Getting almost nothing, just fertilizer. No, 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 no. Okay. What of the shed? A trunk. A trunk. And an extra generator. That could be worth it later on. This was terrible. Everywhere is terrible. I don't know what's left for me in this world. It seems every place is overrun. It's time to beat it. I feel like going home. There are still so many unanswered questions I have. So much to do. We can load up the trunk and drive away. A bizarre loneliness is setting in. And one that I can't, can't shirk. Sometimes I feel like I'm all alone in this world. Something's not right about me. I'm not myself. I'm not myself. It occurred to me the other night as I lay in bed and felt distant that I am made of flesh. I am only human, made of flesh. My head is like an egg, which will eventually crack. Like it or not, whether that's birthing some new being or the end of me. As a man, I cannot give birth to others. I am made of flesh. I am a fleshy being. And in the words of Tyler Durden, I am the all singing, all dancing crap of the world, whether I like it or not. And that's the way it's going to be. Whether I like it or not, not all of my statistics can be counted. And some days it seems like trying to become a physical messiah is just not worth it. Who would spend 30,000 XP for fitness? And in a way, I'll never be what I want to be. It takes thousands of hours to improve at anything. What's it all worth in the end? There has to be another way. 
There has to be another way. Yeah, I can't take it anymore. Gerald's right. We need to farm stats to feel good about ourselves anymore. I have an idea. I'll get started on a project. It must be somewhere around here. Ah, I know where I put them. Saw, saw. Where did I put it? It must be somewhere. McCoy. That's where I left everything. A dream I left in the past. Now, reignited. I will restore my father's house. What's gone now can be reclaimed. I just need another chance. Oh, the fool I had been. Thinking all these years I'd find the answer- Ooh, fuck. Fuck. Thinking all these years I'd find the answer within. When in reality, the one true love lay without. I will rebuild my father's house. Nail by nail, board by board. Say only the word, and I'll be there. I should not have done that. Uh, uh this is gonna take some- it's gonna take some work. Oh, thank God. I will rebuild my father's house. One fence at a time, whatever it takes. And replace every destroyed wall with a good one anew. So however much it takes, whatever I do, I will bring sanctity to what was once defiled, removing the old and ushering in the new. Ever since I got moved here, I've had this on my mind practically the entire time. This house really needs to be rebuilt, and it seems like a good excuse for Gerald to level up his carpentry. And little do many people know, but this actually leads to one of the most overpowered ways to play the game. I'll probably show you in a few videos, but uh, you can take out all the staircases in town. I think the sledgehammer has to be one of the strongest items in the game. It can basically get you away from any horde. So one night of sledging all night, and that leads to a gutted house. And I think that takes out everything that was burned from the original downstairs. I've still got to do the upstairs. We have to be more careful to not fall up here. We can actually walk out onto the roof. Try not to sledge the floor. Well, we've now taken out almost everything from the original upstairs too. Definitely still a little bit more work to do. I work for my family, and I take comfort without the need of a reward. Hard work is reward enough in and of itself. But like I said, there is the slow, gradual reward of carpentry skills. And in time, this will pay off. Gerald Williams, you truly are too pure for this world. Help us to be more like you. Guide us in our errors. He truly is a selfless man. I will rebuild my father's house no matter how many days it takes. No matter the pain. Just when I thought I had run out of ideas, uh, it turns out there's whole other worlds in this game that open up. Anyway, I think we'll leave it there for one day. I'm gonna reconstruct this house and then I'm gonna get to my real work next time. I think we'll pause it there, but as always, I'd like to say thanks to the AA support group. You really do keep me going, and I appreciate it. Like I said in the last few videos, we've been streaming a little bit more to Twitch, so if you want to come hang out, we'll either be playing Project Zomboid or something else on there, so I'll leave the link below. Go check it out. As always, it's been a pleasure. Plenty of new adventures to come soon, and I'll see you in the next video. Until next time, Bye bye